Okay. Um, so here we are with uh, the Shining Lecture. And um, uh, here's Jack uh, uh, again uh, telling, uh, asking uh, Danny, uh, did you get tired of bombing everybody in the end of Doctor Strange Love? that Stanley Kubrick shot before 2001. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, here's an interesting shot. I took a couple of shots of it. Um, <laughs> it's funny. It says, fire exit here. Must be kept clear. It says behind uh, Wendy. Must be, ke must be kept clear. And there's crap all in front of uh, the thing. You know, it's like somebody blatantly... Uh, Ignoring that, which is, I th it might be a reference to the Apollo uh, 1 uh, Inferno that killed the three astronauts. But uh, also uh, mirroring that is uh, this stuff over here. This is a kitchen. We're about to walk through a kitchen. What the hell is luggage? And you're going to see a lot more luggage, uh, uh, a better shot of this in a little thing. But there's a bunch of luggage here. Uh, I don't know what luggage is doing in the... Uh, in the kitchen, I don't see it. You can see a lot better. First of all, he's filled the entire thing with luggage. I mean, is this filled with pots and pans? Obviously not. They're, you're about to see all the pots and pans. You know, is he carrying food out? It's not his. Um, the other interesting thing is, uh, luckily, I'm a Miami Dolphins fan, uh, uh, and um, uh, he's wearing Miami, uh, Miami. Uh, uh, colors right here. A Miami Dolphins. It's, it's. I think that's a Miami Dolphins jacket. Actually, is what it is. It's definitely the colors of the Miami Dolphins. That's no, no, no doubt. That turquoise and orange. Um, so uh, you can look that up yourself. To type in uh, Dolphins, uh, Miami Dolphins jacket, and you'll probably see something that looks like that. Although this movie was shot in 1980, so I don't know if anybody has that. But look at all this luggage. It's like how many people were living in the kitchen. And why aren't those people helping him with his luggage? This is the luggage of literally, it must, it's not his luggage. I mean, it, it fits his luggage. Uh, I don't know. You know. It does not make any sense uh, for there to be this much luggage in a kitchen. Okay? So, uh, oh, and by the way, the reference of the Miami is, we will see later on that Scatman Crothers, um, the Halloran uh, character, uh, he lives in Miami. Uh, when I guess he's not at the hotel, he lives in Miami. Also, uh, uh, the, 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 the Apollo launch was from uh, uh, Cape Canaveral in, uh, in uh, Miami. It was launched from Florida um, there. So there's something going on here uh, with uh, Miami, Florida, where Apollo was launched, and Halloran is all connected in a, in a mirror aspect. Somebody smarter, I'm sorry, I'm not smart enough to figure out what is going on here. I will just tell you something. Kubrick is definitely making a statement here. What's interesting is, um, it's it looks like it says, uh, well, we won't talk about that. Anyways, all right, I'll keep on going. Uh, Winifred, this is the biggest place I've ever seen. Uh, so it's enormous maze. Enormous maze, maze, maze. That was, there's a reason all that stuff was done. That screwy stuff with the maze was done. No maze in the original picture. You know, the people walking the wrong way explaining the maze. And we'll see the maze all later on. And uh, I don't know, I don't find that. Uh, mazes are a little bit scary, but not that horrifying. Um, I'll have to leave a trail of breadcrumbs to, every time I come in. Somebody figured that out also. Nothing but a kitchen. All right. Um, here's some interesting things. Um, notice uh, Halloran uh, pulling with his left hand. Uh, I didn't figure this out. Somebody else did. Uh, and then when he opens, uh, he's opening the door with the right hand. And of course, if you look at the previous, the door, the door would open, you know, this way. It would, it would open so. The opening should be on the on the right side, but when we look at the the meat locker uh, uh, later on, the opening is on the uh, this side, the left side from the outside. You know, so this is a mirror here, is what uh, Kubrick is saying. There's a mirror object, and he goes on about uh, you know 20 legs of lamb and blah 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 blah. Do you like lamb, uh, Doc? Um, 
Interesting. He, he listed off, you know, hot dogs, turkeys, all these animals. But the last thing animal he, he lists is lamb. And what, what is it about a lamb? You sacrifice a lamb. Do you like sacrificing lambs, Doc? Uh, no, he answers, uh, you don't. You don't like sacrificing lambs. You won't sacrifice yourself. You won't sacrifice other people. You won't cannibalize to survive, you know? Uh, nope, I like french fries and ketchup. I'm a good old boy. Uh, here it is. Here's the door, which obviously opened opens different than, uh, than the original picture, which was this one. See how the door is opening here, and the door is opening there. And like I said, I didn't figure this out. Somebody else figured that out, which is kind of interesting. Um, they're wondering about how he knew his name was Doc probably his friend. Uh, this is one of the first images that has knife, knives attacking Danny. We will see another one later on. Uh, so Kubrick has strategically placed Danny under a threat there. Um, Alright. Okie dokie. Well, remember six lectures ago? <laughs> Here's Wendy's Three Kool-Aid cans, bada bing, bada boom, bada bam. You know, I told you to remember the remember the Kool-Aid cans that I said was ridiculous for you to have three of them in a house? In a hotel, yeah, you can have three Kool-Aid cans. But in a house, you don't have three Kool-Aid cans. There'll be mold inside one of the cans before you before you even pop finish the first one. Um What is going on with the Kool-Aid? You know what I mean? It was in the remember it was in the original house Wendy was at in uh before they moved to the hotel. And remember that we had the Kool-Aid can and the ones on the fridge were right next to a rocket picture. And uh, it would look like a rocket picture. It might have been just a stun, but it looked like a rocket launching. Well, what do we have this time? And this is the thing why people will go, oh, this movie's about Indians, you know, the oppression of Indians. Uh, they'll stare at this. And Kubrick going, no, this has nothing to do with Indians. I mean, uh, I, yeah, Indians a little portion of this, but this is the big portion. What is Kubrick saying here? There is a reason he has three cans of Kool-Aid and three tang, things of tank. Uh, you probably, you, the younger of you out there, don't know about Tang, but uh, it was sold to the American public by saying that this is what the astronauts drink. And apparently Tang is what the astronauts took to the moon, uh, I don't know, to make a drink that they would like. It tastes like orange, uh, orange uh, 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 water, <laughs> if, you, if you don't add sugar. Anyways, what is this saying? Remember, Kool-Aid. Uh, uh, Kool-Aid was a reference to the Jim Jones uh, uh, massacre. Uh, he, 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 and a buddy, you could type in Jim Jones in the seventies. He, he had, a, he was a cult leader who made all his, uh, cult members drink Kool-Aid that he had poisoned and he killed, I don't know, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 of his followers. They all died in their beds with poison with Kool-Aid. So in the seventies, because of this story came out, the American public and maybe other people in the world, but definitely the American public, uh, started saying, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Like, don't believe the Kool-Aid is, is actually Kool-Aid. You know, don't believe it. Don't believe it. You know, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Well, the Kool-Aid is right next to the tang, the drink that the, the astronauts brought. Don't believe the astronauts took tang to the moon. That is what this is. And even more important here is this is the first time that you actually get to see The Shining. You get to see somebody shining, uh, mainly Halloran, telling Danny, how'd you like some ice cream in a really creepy... While he's talking to Wendy, his brain is transmit transmitting to uh, Danny uh, this. That's why it's written in a bizarre italic uh, 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 font here, is because he's talking to Wendy about one thing, and he's uh, mentally uh, telepathizing to Danny, uh, how'd you like some ice cream, Doc, with the don't drink the Kool-Aid uh, uh, about the tang and the moon landing. That is what this scene uh, has to do with, uh, with uh, it. 
Kubrick. There they are exiting. This is an interesting scene. This is where Kubrick, you know... By the way, I, I haven't pointed them out, but you'll have to see in the movie, there's a lot of these... You're going to see a lot of these. Whenever this happens, this is another signal Kubrick is saying uh, something is going on here. Um, just to show you real quickly... Um, just to show you there was another one. I mean, yeah, you could say that, you know, hey, this... But notice when they walk out of the, the weird, weird freezer door to this, what do they walk out to? These two things. And we'll see these. I'll try to point them out more often uh, in the movie. We'll see them every time something crazy happens. It's almost like, hey, did you see that crazy thing that happened? You, see, you don't you don't see them here. You don't, you don't see them anywhere here. See, you don't see them. And you don't even see them when they go in. But as soon as you walk out, it's just like, whoa, there they are, you know. And then here, uh, when Kubrick uh, shows them here, he shows them at first right here. Here they are. So he's setting up the scene. Something is about to happen here. That's what Kubrick is. It's a signal. It's a Kubrick confirmation. Um, and here it is. And he's got it, interesting enough, closest to the person who's about to do something that, ironically, I saw... <laughs> I mean, I must have watched this movie 30, 40 times, and I never saw this. And then I watched it. This is why you, you have to follow that Godfather uh, uh, line of keep your uh, friends close and your enemies closer. I was actually watching a thing that was debunking, that was saying, no, Kubrick is making a, a horror movie. What are these wackos talking about the, the moon and whatever, you know? So I was watching I was watching an enemies video, but I'm, that's the type of person I am. If if you gotta, if you leave all the comments that I'm wrong here, I'd love, because cause your, your comments that I'm wrong, one of two things are gonna happen. Either I'm I'm right and your, your, your thing is not, your, your argument is wrong, or you're right. I, I love it when people are right, because that makes me stronger, you know? I, I I become more powerful when people I, I i love it when people know more than i do uh because i learn because i love to learn you know so i love you know uh, so i watch people who are my enemies more than i watch people and so this was on a video and they're and we're about to see something now there's two confirmations there's these two red things is one cooper confirmation there's another that that is very interesting and this guy didn't even point out about this i am the one who said okay i saw your little signal that you have um uh but i noticed look at all these characters the three characters here all have interesting have their hands in their pockets that's kubrick saying something is going to happen with hands look out for hand you know some sort of hand gesture and it's not this hand gesture you will see later on what it is although it's interesting that he's making a hand gesture here let's see the hand gesture that mr ullman does make Let's see what he does. Here he is. What is he doing with this thing? You'll be like, hey, he's scratching his nose. No biggie. No, he's not. He's keep on doing it. And if you watch that, he does it more. And who is he staring at? He's staring at Danny. So his thing, the symbolism he is doing is has to do with Danny. And he's smiling creepily. What is going on? He's doing Tony. I don't know if he is Tony or what, but he knows Tony, and Tony is the one who talked to him about uh, uh, about uh, you know working with Nazis and whatever. Uh, Ullman is definitely connected to Tony. He knows Tony, that's for sure. So whether Tony is really uh, Danny's friend or what, uh, Danny, uh, ja uh, uh, Mr. Ullman is connected to it. So this is kind of an interesting shot. Again. Uh, I saw this movie 30 times, never saw this once until somebody actually tried to debunk <laughs> the the moon aspect of uh, of this uh, The Shining, and, and he gave me a, another weapon uh, in my uh, another arrow in my quill. All right, uh, go have uh, go have some ice cream. Uh, behave yourself. Here they are walking. Uh, uh, Wendy says, just like a ghost ship, huh? And. Uh, Uh, Mr. Ullman, I didn't get the shot, but he says uh, nicely, he says, uh, by f by midnight tonight, you'll never think anybody was here. I was like, you know, you'll never think anybody landed on the moon. Uh, here's the other thing that's interesting about this, and that is, come on, what, what, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
six racks of seven up. What is six times seven? Forty-two. Two times three times seven. The forty-two was one of the numbers in that that simple little math uh, thing that I gave you that uh, pointed out that uh, two, three, seven are very important. So six racks of seven up, forty-two. Kubrick did it again. Otherwise, why have a rack of? I mean, no need for that much seven up. Alrighty. Uh, here is all uh, Halloran talking about. Shining. I'm not supposed to talk about Shining. Tony told me not to talk about Shining. Tony's a little boy that lives in my mouth. I like this. This shot, you know, all the other times uh, there's been white. You know, white behind uh, Halloran. And then Kubrick does this. Red, white, and blue. You know, America. Tony talked to him. Uh, it's like I go to sleep and he shows me things. Uh, but when I wake up, I can't remember everything. Uh, sounds like watching television. Uh, does your mom and dad know about Tony? Told them they told me to tell them. Has Tony told you about this place? Well, Tony is connected to Ullman, so yeah, of course he told me. Uh, you know, America wants to know. What's up? Uh, see, this is America questioning. Um, by the way, written on his back, I don't know if you noticed that before. I'm sorry I didn't point it out. You'll have to see that before. It says flyers on his back. Uh, also, when he was in the bathroom, I didn't I didn't tell you about, I didn't, I forgot to tell you that uh, when Tony, when uh, Danny was in the bathroom and, and, and uh, collapsed or whatever uh, before uh, the Ducks incident, uh, he was wearing a sweatshirt that had a 42 on his, uh, on his shoulder, so just more Kubrick confirmations. So you have to go back to those uh, that frame, I'm sorry, to do that, to, to see that 42 when he's in the bathroom brushing his teeth or whatever. Halloran, are you scared of this place? As soon as he says that, what does Kubrick do? Now this I'll give to the people who say it's a horror movie, you know, because that definitely, uh, although you might not notice it the first time you see the movie, but subliminally that, that will definitely go into your mind and you'll be terrified for Danny. You just won't know why until somebody points out that knives are, uh, are, uh, are, are, are scaring Danny. But, but what we're going to find out is that it's not, uh, it's not, it's not the knives that are going to hurt Danny, um, it's uh, what he's about to talk to now that, that is going to hurt uh, Danny. And that is, um, uh, first, before we get into that, um, the, he's saying the hotel is shines also. Not just people uh, shine, but the hotel. And by the way, shining is all a, meta, uh, a, a colloquialism for, uh, for being smart. You know what I mean? If you're smart enough, if you shine, if you, if you question, if you, if you think about things, then you'll shine, you know, to shine. Oh, that student shines. You know, he's very smart. You know, so shining is really the word smart. Are you smart? You know. Um, so here he's talking about that the hotel shines. You know, the hotel uh, uh, leaves a presence behind. Burns toast. Apollo 1 burnt Apollo astronauts. Apollo 1 astronauts. Uh, leaves other traces behind. Not things anyone can notice, not things any idiot can notice. Things who shine, things who are smart can see, things who, who think about things, who things who, who who try to find logical sense and then notice them when things are illogical. Uh, they see things that haven't happened yet. We didn't land on the moon, Kubrick is saying. Sometimes they can see things that happened a long time ago, that the astronauts did burn alive in their in their capsule in Apollo 1. A lot of things here in this particular hotel it is. Not all of them were good. What about room 237? 2 times 3 times 7, 42. 2 plus 3 plus 7, 12. You know. Um, room 237. And by the way, I'm sorry I haven't mentioned it yet, but uh, the reason 237 is affiliated with the moon is because on average the moon is about 237,000 miles away from uh, 
from the uh, earth and and i didn't want to mention it now uh because uh, i wanted to mention it later on because right now you just accept it as you know well that sounds like i'll have to go check google and see how many miles is it 238 239 you know um ironically i've seen some footage of apollo where they say it's uh 218 at some point because the distance between the moon and the earth actually changes uh it's uh the moon is elliptical not circular orbit around the the earth uh what about room 237 are, are you scared of room 237 room 237 what are you talking about you know are you scared of the room 237 where i'm gonna film the the moon fake moon landings no i'm not afraid what is in that room nothing there ain't nothing in room 237 But you ain't got no business going in there anyways. So stay out. Don't film the moon landings. You understand? Stay out.